Good morning. Guess what day it is? It is Friday. I am so glad you're here because I have such a fabulous guest today. I cannot wait to share her with you. This is Business by Design Online. I'm Katie Sevenance. I am your host, and we love bringing you tips, tips that you can use whether you are trying to manage everything working from home now, or maybe things have shifted and you're working in an environment that you're not used to. Maybe you have other people at home too. Maybe you just need some tips to help you take your business to the next level. We are here to help guide you in that. So not only do we offer these free interviews that offer tips for you, but we also have awesome online courses that can really quick and easy online tips and courses that can take you to the next level. Today, my guest is Betsy Clark. I am going to bring her up because she is such a fabulous woman. Yay, Betsy. It is so good to see you. It is good to see you. Oh. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Uh, one day we'll be back hugging and all the good stuff soon. But yeah, yeah. in the meantime, this is like our next best thing. So I am so glad that you were able to work this out so that you could be live with us today. We have a community of women, all ages, all backgrounds, spread across the countries. Where we have um, followers in Canada and Australia and Mexico, and it's been so much fun to keep growing. And I know our community is going to want to hear from you. We are all going through all kinds of changes right now, right? This year did not turn out the way we all intended when we set our our goals at the beginning of the year, right? Right. <laughs> Right. I, I know. I know. Who could have seen it? But here we are and mm -hmm. we're making things work. And you have quite, we all think we've been through it and you have really been through it and you are still thriving and you have, you, your spirit, your personality shines. Everyone who comes in contact with you leaves feeling better about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I love how you do that for people. Will you please share a little bit about your business, how it's evolved, about yourself? Let's talk about Betsy first. Oh, boy. Uncomfortable. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'd rather talk about you. But <laughs> because you asked the question, I will respond. I have been an entrepreneur for over 40 some odd years. I started when I was very young. Um, and I have learned a few things. I have been an entrepreneur. I make a lousy employee. Um, I was in college. I bought a franchise in an industry that didn't exist. It was called weight loss. And this was in the 70s. And I had no idea what I was doing. I had a degree in community health education, uh, a minor in nutrition. My roommate sold me the business. And I'm going, what? I don't know what I'm doing. But it was one-on-one -on -one coaching and helping women lose weight. And I was born with a microphone in my hand, and I was born to coach. And so I've coached um, weight loss. I did specialty wood finishes with my husband and wall finishes for 35 years with my kids. So I was a color coach. I'd go in and say, you know, these women would say, well, the designer thinks I should do this con. I'm going, screw the designer. What's going to be in alignment with you? you know more than anybody else what makes you feel comfortable. And so coaching women to own their own flavor and taste so that they could have a house they felt comfortable with. Instead of shooting all over themselves, I should have this color and this is the color of the year. And I was trained as a colorist by one of the women on the color board that determines what the colors are gonna be. And I'm going, screw that too. If you don't like puce, don't put puce in your house. So always coaching. And I ended up going over the handlebars of my bike about 12 years ago. And I realized that being on scaffolding two stories high was probably not a good idea with a concussion and my hand in a cast. I dropped my chip brush, had to walk down the scaffold two stories, get back up, and I got vertigo. And I thought, oh, well, wait a second, I think I'm a little, I'm in my mid fifties and maybe I need a different career. So a friend and I were walking and this is the power of having people that you trust who can speak into your life and who can ask powerful questions. I said, you know, I'm not really sure. I've been an artist my whole life. What am I gonna do? It's a family business. I love working with my husband still. I mean, that's a miracle in and of itself. <laughs> and she said, and I was coaching field hockey at a private school down here. 
And um, she said, Bets, what's your favorite nickname? And I'm thinking, what does that have to do with the price of eggs? What? <laughs> and she said, so what's your favorite nickname? And it came out of my mouth before I could even help myself. And I said, it's coach. So I ended up going and getting certified as a uh, strengths, Gallup certified strengths coach. And I really help women understand what's right with them as opposed to, ah, oh, what's well. wrong with me? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with me? And we're in the midst of a pandemic. That seems to be a very common question. What's wrong with me? How come I'm not further along? How come, how come, how come? Right. And I want women to take a big old deep breath. I want them to give themselves some grace and realize we're all doing the best we can. And as we get clearer on who we are and what I can and I cannot do, that will guide us what our next steps are. And yeah. so that's really, that's the, the quick version of Betsy Clark's career. And um, <laughs> I'm not done yet. I got a good 15, 20 years in me. I, I got more to say. Oh, I believe that. I believe that. And there are a lot of people who need to be touched by Betsy Clark. I can tell you that. Thank so you. Betsy, you live in Colorado Springs. I do. I know you're a big animal lover. How many animals do you have hiding out these days? Um, well, I have headphones on so that you can't hear them. I have a cat, an outdoor cat, who is right by the window just going, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> I mean, he wants, he's never coming in the house, but um, I have a cat whose name is Ketch and he's the bully. We wanted to call him Bruce because he's the boss, but um, he's, he's not a Bruce. And then I have an, you know, actually it's, I will tell a story later about my dog Frida, who is a wack a wackadoo. We have no idea what she is. She looks like a cow. She's 10 years old. She's a cancer survivor. Mm. And during the pandemic, um, I needed to tend to my heart. It's been a hard year. And we found a another rescue who's a black mouth cur Malinois. She looks like Marmaduke. And her name is Ruthie, and we call her Kangaroo because she looks just like a kangaroo. So I, I, cannot, meet her. I yeah. cannot wait to meet her. That's fun. <laughs> and I She's love it. She's How old is she now? I think 10 months old. She has no teeth. So we call her Toothless Ruthless. And, um, <laughs> you know, we're. We're sinking the big bucks in to find out what's going on in that precious little black velvet mouth. So, but you know, oh, she wow. hasn't chewed any of her shoes. So we're feeling really fortunate. No handbags have been ruined. Oh it's, my gosh. Well, there is a benefit to that, right? No teeth and- Always a silver lining, always. <laughs> She's <laughs> lucky to be in your family, definitely. Well, we always question who rescues whom. Uh-huh. Minor rescues too and we have a house full. So yeah, <laughs> that's funny. I love it. I yeah. love it. All right. So Betsy, what do you find yourself doing these days? I mean, you're, you work from home, you're a coach. I do. Um, this, so we're kicking off October. You're the first interview of the month of October, which is our focus is kind of on planning, right? Like, okay thinking about the things we want to have happen this month or next year and how we want to kind of go off in that direction. But we were talking about some of the things that you've been through and you've had quite an experience. Um, right now, I think it's really important for people to realize that, you know, take a breather, right? And we were talking about maybe talking, discussing resilience. Um, and sharing some ideas and things that have helped you through this period that you want to share with other women. Would you feel good about um, sharing some tips and ideas for us? Sure, I will. Um, and I, thank you. Um, this is, it's been a really difficult year. I've had a lot of loss and death and trauma. And I'm one of those people that just digs deep. It's just like, come on, I can do this. I can dig deep. And I'm a mindset chaplain. So I really believe in the power of the mind. And after in um, November, one of my, my best friend decided that despair was going to win and she attempted to take her life. Um, and then a week later, my 
spiritual mentor went into the hospital and was dead within two weeks. And, and in the midst of all of this, my son got married. And so, you know, I had to bracket all of this and say, okay, I'm going to be present for my kids. And we had a blast. I, I danced on the dance floor so much that I missed the cutting of the cake. I would not come off that dance floor. But anyways, you know, so it's a choice. Peace is a choice. We always get to choose. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to go the path. I'm going to, I'm going to have my community. I'm going to talk with people and I'm, I will get help when I need it. But I'm, I'm fine. Well, so fast forward into March and COVID hits. And so it's this whole thing about having to pivot. And so I realized, because I speak, I travel around the country and I, I speak as part of my, my business. And um, so all of a sudden I'm on, uh, I'm on Zoom all the time, which has been such a blessing for me. Um, and it's not to minimize the suffering that some people are going through with COVID. My daughter-in-law had COVID. And it's been a really good thing for me because now I'm out speaking globally in a way right. that I could have. And, and honestly, um, I was traveling a lot every three weeks. And I was finding that I wasn't rebounding quite as quickly as I wanted to. But I, couldn't, I could talk myself out of that. And we have to listen with our bodies. And I'm really about integrating heart and soul with your mind. It has to be integrated. And so in June, I was sound asleep. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And two teenage boys were kicking down our back door after they had robbed us, uh, robbed my husband's van and taken a bunch of stuff and money and whatever. Mm. And we weren't very smart. I do not recommend this, but we called 911 and my husband was just livid. And he went out on the front porch and started yelling at him and they decided to warn us and, and shot at the house. And fortunately they missed us. Um, it was pretty traumatic to, pretty feel traumatic. Like, <laughs> to feel like our house is a refuge, that we use our home as a refuge for people that are in need. And so we, I realized the next, that day, I went and coached all my, my neighbors and this is what's happened. This is you know, what I would recommend you do, get these doors, do that, all that stuff. And on Tuesday morning, I woke up and I, I had shattered mm -hmm. physically. I just couldn't, I couldn't dig deep anymore. After a lifetime of digging deep, I got more energy than the Energizer Bunny and I didn't have it. And so I felt really fragile and I kind of shattered, not kind of, I shattered. Yeah. And I took the whole summer off to take care of myself and to heal. I, I got um, a therapist because I knew I needed a therapist. But what I also learned two weeks prior to this break-in and what, this trauma, there's something, and, and the author's name is Nassim Talib, and he wrote a book called Anti Fragile. And so I want to, and I am not qualified to be talking about this, but I'm high in connectedness and I'm able to make connections. And this gave me the strength to persevere and to not quit because it was really between COVID and some of the loss that I had not taken the time and the space and the grace to address. Um, it was tough. And so I felt like I had shattered, that I was fragile. It was like a, a champagne flute that just shattered. And we talk about resilience, and resilience is really, really good. But in my estimation, resilience never felt like enough. And I'm not trying to be a jerk and question your whole topic on res resilience, but I want to suggest there might be something beyond resilience. Do you remember um, Greek mythology at all? There was a, a creature called Hydra. And it had all these multiple heads and they'd cut one of the heads off and two heads would grow back. And so resilient is, um, I, I want to make sure that I get, get what it is. It, it, um, it allows us to come back, right? It's like the weeble wobble that you punch and you when knock them they don't fall down. They don't fall down. And so you punch them seven times and they get up eight. But I don't want to just get back up. 
I want to move past resilience and get into anti-fragile. So what anti-fragile is, anti-fragile makes us better. We don't just get up. We get up and we're better. And so I want to, every time I get cut, I want two heads to come back. I want to be better. I want to not let the stuff of life, welcome to humanity. We all have our stuff, but mm -hmm. it's a choice. And so, you know, my back, my back door still hasn't been fixed. It's still the, everything's still cracked. I probably shouldn't be telling you where I live, but, um, you know, we're still not out of the woods. Mm. And every single night when I go to bed, I choose peace instead of fear. I choose hope instead of fear. John Gordon has a great, what's the similarity between fear and hope? Do you know what the similarity is between them? Mm -mm. They both believe in a future that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. And so do I go to bed every single night and say, is this, are they coming back? Or do I say, you know what? I shattered, I bounced back and I'm making this, you know, during that three months that I took off to heal, I ended up getting two new clients that were in their eighties and three new clients who were in their seventies. And I was not actively going out and getting clients. They were finding me because of the things I had planned on and set in place that it was able to carry. I mean, I, I had a great summer financially and I just tended to the, my current clients. How does this work? That to me is anti-fragile because now I have peace that if I get knocked down again, and God forbid, should I shatter again, could happen. I know how to bounce back and I know how to have it stand for good. It makes that. me better. Yeah. And so, you know, this book is, is, it's great. It's very analytical. It's way beyond my understanding, but I, you know, it's so what, so that. So I got what I needed from this concept so that I could go out and continue to be unstoppable because there's an unremitting purpose that won't go away. And I, I just honestly believe that our understanding of ourselves and how we think impacts every aspect of business and every aspect of our life. And so we always have choice. And what happened is if I had not listened to my body and integrated all of this stuff, and I'm not talking, you know, I'm not trying to be a whack job on the, on this call, but our bodies don't forget. And there's been some trauma that I've gone through that's, you know, I'm still carrying. And right. so I went and I, I got that taken care of. I took care of myself, not just taking a bath with Epsom salts and candles. I mean, I really, took care of myself in a variety of different ways. And unbeknownst to me, um, I, I knew I was going to have hip surgery in August. And unbeknownst to me, two weeks after that, my best friend took her life. Mm. And so, you know, it's just been, it's been an assault. It's been surgery. It's been robbery. It's being shot at. It's realizing your best friend is in very significant trouble and you can't rescue her. Wow. And so I want to just say, you know, I'm not a therapist. Believe me, I'm not a therapist. But if you are struggling with um, things in your life and you are having suicide ideation, please, please, please seek professional help. And there are hotlines. There are people out there that are skilled. Um, your friends and your family love you, but they're not skilled to help you in the areas that you need help. And so I know this wasn't part of, of the agenda, Katie, but I feel like there are a lot, this is, this is a difficult time and it's unprecedented. And I am here to say that you can shatter and you can rebuild and you can be resilient 
and you can be better. But I, I didn't that. do it alone, Katie. Yeah. We need a community. You you got the help you needed. You're a coach and you got the help you needed. It's important to realize that that it's okay to ask for help. That is I know that's always been a tough one for me because I'm like I can do everything, but you get to a point and you I love that you realized, okay, it's time for me to ask for help. I'm I need the help. And that's awesome. And I know you've been through so much that most of us, you know, yeah, COVID has put a little damper on what we do, but you've been through it and coming back stronger. We all can do that if we make choices, right? Take care of ourselves. And we make, we see, here's the thing. These aren't willy nilly choices. You have to, Stephen Covey said, you have to start with the end in mind. I am very clear on what my legacy is going to be. And my legacy is bigger than I am. And so the decisions that I make always support that. And I think that's really important to remember is have a plan and then work your plan. It's, it's really imperative. Well, and that's good because you can still deviate. You can go in different directions and, and do what you have to do, but you know, ultimately, this is where I'm going. And even though, because with COVID, it, all, all our plans have shifted. None of us are doing exactly our business the way it was. We thought we were going to be doing it when we set that intention last year. So, you Hallelujah. Know, exactly. Hallelujah. And what so a wake up call. Yeah. Like you said, you're talking internationally now. We have all learned how to master Zoom and master online oh, communication. Yeah. <laughs> I've played with some funny backgrounds once in a while, but the key with it is that we can reach people in different ways. It's made the world smaller. We're all going through the same thing, right? You're not in your own little space. We're all dealing with things differently. We can con connect in different ways. So it can be um, challenging and we can be stuck. But if we choose to embrace it, take the next step and be stronger and go out and do it differently, it opens doors for the potential of what we can be doing. And just I think sometimes we get so closed in our mind of how we have to do this. But I feel like COVID has sort of almost open the door. There is no gate anymore. Let's just go. Let's try things. Do something different. That's anti-fragility. That's being anti-fragile, looking for opportunities. And it's not always certain. So here, maybe this is the whole point we're having this, this conversation. I want to give women permission to make a decision in six months. If you need to change it, change it. Yes. It's, I was told that you make a decision and doggone it, you stick yeah. with it. Come on, be yeah. a woman of your word. Yeah. And here's the way I look at decisions. We're in unprecedented times. Things are changing. And so here's, and this is true of all leadership, is leaders have superior information. And I'm not saying that that's better than us, but they have more information. They have access to more information that we do. And, and a good leader is willing to course correct when it's appropriate to, to you know, change course, course mm -hmm. correct. And so I, I want to give women, there's someone out there that needs to hear that. Mm -hmm. You have permission, oh, I, you know what, to show yourself some grace. This is about loving, accepting, and forgiving yourself. And you know what, you're going to make some really fantastic decisions you're going to make some boneheaded decisions. <laughs> but so do we stick with the boneheaded decisions at the, at the cost of our soul of the cost of our, you know, our, I could go on at the cost of filling right. a blank. Right. And, and forgiveness is a sticky word for a lot of us because we, we don't really know what it means. And the best definition I ever heard about forgiveness is letting go of the past you wish you'd had. Wow. Yeah. I have to write that. Yeah. 
Well, it's on the back of your gift. It's on the, oh no, it's not. So I want people to give themselves grace, but let me be very, very, very clear that a grace card is not the same as an excuse card. This does not say excuse on it. This is grace. You can't stay stuck on the couch eating bonbons thinking that's grace. That's right. an excuse to not get up and do the very things that you need to do. So here's, here's how I look at the two of these differently. Grace is big, it's expansive. It gives us courage, it gives us hope. And I, you know, I was talking to you about my, my older dog, Frida, and she's a wackadoo. We had it about a year, and she hears and sees things that we don't have any idea they're going on. It's a little unnerving and she gets pretty whacked out about it. So I took her, we'd had her about a year and I went to see my vet and he said, Betsy, sit down on the floor with me. And I thought, oh, I'm in trouble. And he said, Frida is limited. And Frida is giving you 101% of her limitedness. I've told this story for 10 years and I still get choked up. Katie, we're all limited. The majority of us are giving 101% of our limitedness. And I, I could have justified and made excuses. This isn't what we signed up for. I have every reason in the world to be able to rehome this puppy because it was bait and switch, the person that we got her from didn't tell, I mean, like I could have made an excuse because you see what happens is excuses make us small. Yeah. And they, they get us off track of who we really are. And they smacks enough of the truth to keep us playing a smaller game. And to be honest with you right now, with everything I have experienced in my 65 years here on planet Earth, we need hope and we need grace. We need the opportunity. When, we, when I get grace from you, you give me spaciousness. You give me hope. You show me something that I didn't deserve. It's unmerited favor. It's undeserved. And you give it liberally and you give it freely. Grace is free. Otherwise, it's called manipulation. And so here's, if I had to say one thing that um, I'm seeing, and it's because I'm experiencing myself, so I might as well get better with the adversity, right? Yeah. Is women have a hard time receiving. We're really good givers. But do you understand that you cannot give if there's no receiver? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So we block a blessing when we refuse to receive. Oh, no, 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 no. I, you know what? I'm not letting you get in close. I'm not letting you give me something. I need to be in control of what I take in or I don't take in. And we are living emotionally anorexic lives, we're missing out on the banquet of life and the juiciness of banqueting together and receiving. I'm like, I'm kind of having a moment over here. Uh. There is a difference between the act of receiving and the art of mm -hmm. receiving. And it is time that we step into the art of receiving. Give ourselves some grace. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Because this wasn't on our script. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And you know what? I told you I've been talking about having you be our guest for a long time because you just, I have goosebumps. And what you say, it was today's the perfect day. Today's the day that we needed you to be here. Yeah. and yeah. set the tone and you, we can do this and we can be stronger and we're all going to be facing things. We're not always making the best decisions. It's okay. Right. Let's go on from there and be stronger and better and 
and take the next step. It's awesome. Phoenix says she loves you too, Betsy. I love you too, Phoenix. It's, it's hard when we don't get to see you on a regular basis. And I know, I know, I know. You are stronger. You have many heads now. Yes. <laughs> well, there are people who look at me like I do have two heads because you never know what's going to come out of my mouth, but that's what keeps it fun. And it, you know the right things came out of your mouth today because so. somebody, and I'm sure many people needed to hear exactly what you shared with us today. I do appreciate that. You're stronger than you think. You know more than you realize, and we need you. Here's the dilemma is you never know how a room changes when you walk into it. And you never know how the room changes when you leave. And so if you're despairing, please, please speak up. Yes. There are people out there that can help. Yes. I, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Because um, this is a time when we all need to help each other too and be there. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, coming together, stronger together, right? Right. Do that. Right. And right. I do believe that. Where can people connect with you? Because are you taking clients? Are you working now? You yep. have yeah. Yep. I've been I've been working for the last month. My hip is great. I am rocking and rolling. So yes, I my doors are open. Um, they can go to my website and I can put it in the, the chat, but it's Betsy Clark LLC.com. And then if you want, I have a, um, a, a gift, you know, if people want to opt in, it's an accountability journal. And it really talks about much of what we've, okay, it's applied knowledge. We've, we've, you guys are all really smart. The issue is you, you need to apply it in this accountability journal. So if you go to BetsyClarkLLC.com forward slash AJ, I'll send you a free accountability journal with some teachings around it. So it isn't just a one and done. And um, take what, what you learn, AJ, and right. take what you learn on business by design through the classes, through the interviews, and then apply it. There's yes. nothing more frustrating for those of us who are teachers and mentors and consultants and chaplains, whatever you are, and to, to have juicy stuff out there and people go, Oh, I've already heard of that before. Well, are you applying it? Right. Because yes. you have to choose to commit and take action. I love that. Your accountability, accountability journal sounds like the perfect thing to get us on the right track for the next year. That is awesome that you share that with us. I will put more information in there. So for those of you who are catching us on the replay, don't worry, you can take advantage of this. I will post all that information there. And if you know somebody who's struggling, share this with them or reach out to them and, and get some numbers for them on someone who can help them so that um, no one has to struggle alone. We definitely don't want that. So Betsy, thank you for sharing such wisdom with us today. And um, Good luck to you. I want to see you out riding your bike. And oh, oh, <laughs> I'm two weeks away. I am. I, I am love so it. Close. I am so close. Hey, one one last thing on yeah. the chat. It should be BetsyClarkLLC.com oh. forward slash AJ. I see that. I will adjust that. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. Just so, just so women can, you know what? We all love something free. Uh, yeah, I love it. And free accountability journal. I love it. And I will make sure I correct that and um, get that up there for everyone to join us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I love your smile. I will be following up with you very soon. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Sooner than later. <laughs> Next week, we have uh, interviews on Tuesday and on Friday. So I hope you will join us. You can get the reminders here on our Facebook group. You can also see all the replays on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Business by Design Online, and subscribe, and then you'll see all the videos. Thanks a lot. Have a fabulous weekend and a great start to your October. Take care, everyone.